Hello, I'm Simon Christie. And I'm Danny Sparks Cousins. Welcome to your 4x4. Well, Simon, what's on the show this week? Danny, we've got a great diverse episode. We've got the My14 Colorado release where we take a bunch of journalists out on some serious four-wheel drive tracks. And we've also got some local recreational wheeling. Sounds good, let's get into it. Your 4x4 is presented by the Holden Colorado 7, White Force Performance Lighting, Brown Davis Automotive, Kmart Four Wheel Drive, ARB 4x4 Accessories, Piranha Off Road Products, and Berrima Diesel. Hi, I'm Scott Doughty, Vehicle Performance Manager here at Holden. Today we've got a range of new model year 14 Colorados and Colorado 7s and we're going to go for a bit of a drive on a media test day. We're hoping today gives a good opportunity to test the new features and content of the model year 14 vehicles. We've got significant upgrades to the powertrain as well as a new infotainment system. Today we've planned pretty much everything except for the weather. The weather's not looking good but this could actually give us a really good chance to test some of the features of the new car. So we're really excited about what's going to happen today. We've got some great improvements for the new model year 14 Colorado and really looking forward to showcasing those vehicles. Hi, my name's Laurie Pallich. I'm one of the engineers at Holden and today we're taking journalists on a drive up along the Hume Highway and then into the Tullaroog State Forest, is also Mount Disappointment, to have a lunch spot at camp number one. And we're going to show off the vehicles today, doing some four wheel drive tracks with about 12 vehicles and about 24 journalists. And it should be a good day. There's uh, probably a little bit of dust on the roads and hopefully a little bit of rain might settle the dust for the drivers to be able to enjoy the drive through the forest and up some rocky tracks and down, down through some mud holes, etc. Should be a good time, I think. Yeah, we uh, planned the route several weeks in advance and did several reccees, checking out the roads and selecting the right sort of tracks so journalists can evaluate the vehicles and see how they drive in the field. I'm Sean Rockford and I'm from Oz Roma in Sydney, online publication and magazine on four wheel drives. This morning we've test rode the Colorado. First stop I was in the Colorado 7, which was very capable off-road. The downhill trails we went on, it just lapped up the ruts with breeze. The new hill descent control was fantastic on the Colorado 7 dual cab. Overall, it's just been a magnificent car. A vast improvement on the last model. I think it's fantastic, great to drive. Quiet, comfortable, just a great all-rounder. The mountain range we went through is absolutely gorgeous down here in the country. It was just magnificent, the scenery, put the cars through its paces. It's been a great day so far and just everything about it has been fantastic. Holden, I've got to praise the way they've set it all up and it's just been a good day. Put Colorado through its paces, pretty much bitumen driving. So I guess prove that road noise has been quietened in the vehicle. Second leg, a fair bit of four wheel driving involved. Put the uh, Colorado and the Colorado 7 through its paces and it handled that terrain extremely well. There's been some refinements made to the car between obviously the previous Model Year 13 and, and the current variant and overcome some of the, I guess, some of the obstacles or major objections that they have had with the vehicle and is looking forward to some pretty positive reviews with the vehicle going forward. So it's been a pretty good day.
Murray Hubbard is my name, I'm from MrCars.com. Well we started off with a pretty uh, straightforward run up the Hume and that was all top gear stuff. Then we had some fun off road, putting the Colorados into low range, both in automatics and manuals, and taking on some pretty steep hill. The Colorado actually did pretty well. I think there's a big difference in the new one. The new engine's a lot torquier, which is great. Secondly, I really like the six-speed box because the sixth gear is very high range, which means you're cruising along at 110, doing about 1,700 RPM, so it, it works really well. After we finished the serious four-wheel drive stuff, we were coming along some pretty high ridge lines, which I think may have been burnt out in the bushfires on Black Saturday, and the views are quite spectacular. The country's all green. It's great-looking country. Well, viewers, plenty more to come from that trip, but for now, it's the Ask an Expert question. Well, our question for the experts this week comes from Andrew Brown, who wants to know, how long can you keep diesel in your jerry can before it goes bad? Now, it's a pretty good question, and I think Cameron from Brown Davis will be able to answer it for us. Well, the simple answer is, you can keep diesel for a fair while, whether it's carrying in a fuel tank or in a jerry can, you've got months. And if you think to yourself, I've got a couple of months of this can last, but not years. What diesel can do is grow a little bit of algae, which over time, of course, can send it bad and you don't want to be using it. So if you say to yourself, it can last a fair few months, but never can last the years. Thanks again for your question, Andrew. You've won yourself a pair of Piranha diff breathers. You've also gone into the draw for a Brown Davis underguard, a pair of Light Force striker driving lights and an RFI antenna. And for full details on all of the Your 4x4 prizes, check the your4x4.com.au website. Does your diesel smoke, lack power, or have poor fuel economy? Then you need the Berrima Diesel Treatment. Fine tuning diesels since 1956, the Berrimer diesel technicians are Australia's leading diesel wizards. From a turbo installation to a high tech dyno tune, when you think diesel, think Berrimer diesel. Visit thedieselexperts.com and make an appointment for more power, more torque and better fuel economy. Sometimes the front runners lead from behind, and when it comes to protecting your rear, Kmart are world leaders in rear end protection and tow bar combinations. The just released Prado 150 is no exception, with a bar that is designed to follow the car's lines and work with your sensors and factory camera. For the best in rear end protection, trust Kmart. It's a statement, not just an accessory, but the toughest of 4x4 trips. For more info, go to kmart.com.au. Got a tough 4x4 tourer and enjoy hitting the tracks? Odds are you'll need some serious underguard protection and a heavy duty long range tank. Brown Davis Automotive offer aluminised steel underguard protection plates and long range tanks for most popular makes and models. They're designed and developed right here in Australia and have been tested to the extreme right across this great country. Remember Brown Davis Automotive, it's a trusted and family owned Aussie business and proud manufacturers of high end tanks, underguards and more. Viewers, this week's trip to the Glasshouse Mountains raises some interesting legal issues. When travelling in this area, you need to understand that there are three distinct groups with control over the areas, and whilst there is no signage and certainly limited information on the boundaries of these three organisations' control, it is critical to know that you do need permitted access to venture into these areas for recreational four-wheel driving. For more information on this matter, contact Four Wheel Drive Queensland, the governing association of all four wheel drive clubs within Queensland and a body that is working continuously to maintain access to this region. 
Remember viewers, it always pays wherever you're travelling to double check that you've got the legal and required permission to be in that area. G'day, Mick from Superior Engineering in Brisbane here. We've got a few cars come in today. We're going to go for a bit of a track up to Glasshouse Mountains for a bit of four-wheel driving. From here, it's about a 40-minute drive. Just notice when I walk past your car, you've got your hose on your Amada um, hanging out a little bit. Yep. You want to really get that in nice and close zip tied because when you fall wheel drive in a day, that tyre, when it's turning and articulating and everything, that's going to grab that yep. one of the lugs yep. and it's just going to rip it off. So, yeah, even a, for this trip, just a zip tie, but when you get home, you want to get a proper P clamp and actually clamp yep. it on properly. Some of the terrain we're going to see up there today, it's fairly loamy, sort of sandy stuff, fairly easy to drive, and then you'll come into some of the creeks that might be wet and muddy, depending on how much rain they've had up in that area. You'll have rocky sort of areas where there's good hills and obstacles go around. A lot of it's all narrow track, fairly wooded sort of area, so sometimes you might have obstacles like tree stumps and logs and that you've got to climb over. It's just a good mix of different sort of terrain to try and test these trucks out. Is that the last car? Yeah, we'll get moving anyway, otherwise Be stuck. You'll probably see some of the vehicles might climb things better than others. Sometimes that's better suspension, sometimes some of these guys might have lockers. I've got a locker in my vehicle, that combined with good suspension, it should make the trip really easy and safe for us all. So we're on the track up here at Big Red and we've noticed one of the Hiluxes has gone over. They weren't with our group but they were, they were just in front of us so we've come up and had a bit of a look. It's a pretty bad rollover on this hill, it's a pretty nasty hill. So we're just going to assist them a bit, try and help them get their car down safely. So we've got one of the comp trucks up above us, up higher. We're gonna put a rope down onto the high point of this vehicle. There's no real perfect way to recover this thing than where it is, but we're gonna try and winch the thing back down the hill safely. And then the owner of the vehicle can hopefully get the motor running and get it out of here before night time. So we'll see how we go and cross our fingers, all goes well. So we've recovered the back corner, going up to a pulley block across to one of the vehicles up behind us. And on the other side, we've hooked up to the front point to try and hold that suspension down. From here, like it's a really hard recovery in the respect of there's no easy way to get it down. Now we've secured it, we're gonna try and high lift it on the far side, try and skew it around backwards, and then try and lower this down. And then hopefully the owner of the vehicle can get the oil out of the engine and get this thing running again so he can get it home before dark. Down. Bring him down. In a bit. Whoop. Out. Just got to go that bit. He won't go far. 
down. Everyone had a good day by the looks of it. There are all a different array of vehicles out here. We go from lighter vehicles to more heavy duty vehicles. My car is a TD42 GQ Patrol. It's just got a two inch lift with six inch shocks. No lockers, that's about all. Pretty standard, bit of a right foot in it. Fair bit of spare gear on it. I got arms in it, I got steering rods, all that. But yeah, just drive it hard. It gets up most things that I put it at, so yeah. Everyone seemed to get through everything pretty easily. Pilots of the day were a little red. A couple of people went up there. I myself went up there. There was a rollover on Big Red, which we assisted in the recovery. And yeah, everyone had a quite good day. Everything went well. No one's broken anything or anything like that. So it was good. It's been awesome. No damage done to any of the vehicles. Thanks for all the guys who come out, spent the time today full driving with us. Really appreciate it. Thanks to Full Drive TV for coming out, sending one of your video guys down here, Chris, to do video work for us. Really appreciate it. We hope you guys come down again. We do another great day out here at Glasshouse Mountains. Well, Simon, the entry this week comes from Nathan Vallis. Nathan's written, In my life, I can't always choose where I work or where I live. But with my 4x4, I can choose where I dream to go. Thanks for sending in that email. You've won yourself a Light Force Tack Torch and Stubby Holder. You've also gone into the draw for the ARB Twin Motor Compressor and Projector 600 Watt Pure Sine Wave Inverter. For full details on all of the Your 4x4 prizes, check the Your 4x4 website. Warning, beware of imitation lights. Only Light Force Performance Lighting guarantees. Australian made, no leaking or melting, quality output and three year warranty. Unlike their imitators, Light Force lights feature peerless construction, leak proof seals, impact proof lenses and filters, vibration and fracture resistant mounts and housing, and stainless steel fittings, outshining and outlasting their impersonators in every way. Often imitated, never replicated. Visit lightforce.com for the full range of authentic Light Force lights. ARB, Australia's largest manufacturer and distributor of 4x4 accessories, has everything you need for your next off-road adventure. 
from ball bars and suspension to recovery gear and lights, we've got four-wheel drives of all shapes and sizes covered. Whether you're heading off to Bitumen for a weekend getaway or preparing for that epic round Australia trip, enjoy a safer, more comfortable journey with ARB. To order a copy of our free catalogue, visit our website or give us a call. 30 second kitchen, a kitchen in 30 seconds. Fridge slide first. Fridge slide's got 130 kilo tracks in it, so it's nice and tough. Remove the R clip, don't lose it. Drop the pin, leg locker. Kitchen now. Lock kitchen down here. Retrieve the R clip. Lock on here, R clip in. Leg here, leg here. Pull them together. Stove, Billy. How good's that, guys? Couldn't ask for quicker. Peter Roberts, I'm the Assistant Vehicle Line Director for Imported Vehicles at Holden. My role in this particular program is to make sure everything at Holden's ready when we launch the vehicle, like all our spare parts are here, our finances are worked out, our brochures are ready, and we have a day like this organised for press to see the car and drive it. Initially we were not going to do a real launch for this, this is just a model year change on the car but we changed our mind on that about two months ago so we've been a bit of a rush getting everything organised and getting access to journalists etc. Just to make everyone familiar with the products we're launching and you get some publicity in the media and then customers know that we've actually changed the car. From here we're heading off to do some mud so it'll be interesting and put the vehicles really through their paces and see what they can actually do. So we just had a lunch stop at Flowerdale Road, which is camp number one. Everybody's had a nice lunch under a marquee, and we're sort of heading off to do the second stage. Some people are needing to get back to the airport to catch international flights to New Zealand. We've had journos from overseas doing the drive today, and the other group is basically split 50-50, and they'll be driving back over the same tracks, and some of them are a little bit more challenging going uphill rather than downhill, so we'll be showing hill descent, etc for the other journos who might have missed out on some of those tracks. So it should be a good afternoon for the people who are really keen in driving and four-wheel driving, etc. Roads have been a little bit dusty, so that sort of spreads the group out a little bit over the tracks. But the driver changes have been a bit of talking and carrying on, so they've been quite happy about what's been going on. Hello, my name's Peter Anderson. I'm from The Motor Report and we're here on the Colorado launch for the MI14 model update. I'm a four-wheel drive newbie, so this has been a bit of a laugh, dragging a very large car down very narrow, steep, rocky tracks. And I found it a lot easier than I thought it would be, so I've been having a good day. Looking forward to the mud stage. The well, it should go very badly, but thankfully I've got people around me who will laugh at me and point and take all the pain away. Yeah, I think that'll be fun. Just depends how deep the mud is. My name's Mark Cadel, I'm with GM Inside News, which is an American-based blog site. They're very interested in our cars because they're to receive a, a version of the Colorado in the near future. I'm not a four-wheel drive person at all. Uh, my total experience is the original launch plus this one, so it's probably a couple of hours. It's very, very easy to place, even on very heavily rutted tracks, lots of rocks and trees that we've been going over today, and it feels a lot smaller than it actually is, and it's very, very easy to keep it out of the shrubs. The first impressions of these new vehicles are absolutely positive. The journalists have been genuinely impressed with the vehicle's capability off-road. The increased power and torque obviously has been well received and really comes in handy when these vehicles are being driven in these conditions. Another one of the features that the journalists really liked was the hill descent control which now comes on the pickup trucks as well as the wagon. The cars have gone really well. We've done some really challenging tracks over rocks and a lot of hard four-wheel driving harder than I would ever do myself and the cars seem to have gone really well, haven't picked up any problems and the journalists have been very pleased. That concludes our drive day where we've had some of Australia's motoring media drive the Model Year 14 Colorado and Colorado 7 vehicles. We've had a great day driving in the Tellerook Forest 
and a good opportunity to explore some of the capabilities of these new vehicles. It was great to have Simon Christie along for this particular event. His wealth of knowledge was invaluable in setting up the course and showing us around some of the tracks that Melbourne has to offer so close to the city. I've spoken to some of the journalists that drove these vehicles today and they've been truly impressed by the vehicle's capability. I would like to say thanks to Simon Christie for helping out with this event. It really does make a big difference having some of the local knowledge and the experience to really showcase what these vehicles are capable of. Thanks Simon. Our first entry for the week is this D22 Navara, taken after a day out on the beach near Kadena in South Australia. Next is this GQ Patrol, having a bit of a break while playing in the pristine sand at Esperance in Western Australia. Now this looks like a great trip. The GU Ute is all set up and heading to Cape York. This shot was taken at Palm Creek on the Telegraph Track. This FJ Cruiser is only two months old, but already set up with the essentials. This photo was taken on a family trip around Western Australia's Shark Bay. And our last entry for the week is this GU Patrol, set up with all the good gear and travelling through the Flinders Ranges. If you've just seen your photo and you're the first to email danny at your4x4.com.au then you've won yourself the Projector 12 volt portable power station. All photos will go into the draw for the series prize of a DP chip diesel power unit and the amazing 12 volt travel buddy oven. Well viewers, thank you for tuning in for another diverse episode of your 4x4. Now those Colorados are turning out to be quite good, capable, four-wheel drive vehicles. Our two, we've been testing for well over a year now and they're going quite well. And Simon, the trips that I've been driving them on, they've been fantastic. I've been really pleased with them. Well viewers, we've got another big episode planned for you next week. I'm Simon Christie. And I'm Danny Sparks Cousins. We'll see you next week. Welcome to the 2012 Variety 4x4 Adventure. We've had some wonderful days here, beautiful weather. We've all got the same interest, raising money for the children and having a great time out in the bush, seeing wonderful scenery like you can see around here. There's never been a vehicle up in this gulch, you know, for three generations. You're definitely going to take a lot of damage. If you don't have body protection, or you don't have some sort of protection from the elements out here, it's really going to eat you up. The terrain consists of more mud and hill climbs and ruts, but not too much rocks, so you'll see a lot of good paced action here. Here we go, it's supposed to be summer and we're still freezing cold, but we can only go forward driving, it'll keep the dust down and that's what we can look forward to.